Well, hello, my friend. Welcome back to another episode of the From Chaos to Peace podcast, where I talk about how clutter is so much more than you think, and we put a spiritual twist on clearing that clutter to get organized. Thank you so much for allowing me back into your ears. Well, hello, my friend. I'm Connie Graff, your host. Welcome back, and thank you so much for allowing me back into your ears. Today, I want to talk about a secret on how to beating procrastination and taking action that I recently came across in a book I read. And then I realized I had actually successfully done it that way already twice of that I know of <laughs> without knowing that this was a thing, without knowing that this was a scientifically proven concept. So here we go. As you might know, I'm an avid reader. I read mostly nonfiction, often business books, but also a lot of books around astrology and spirituality. My absolute favorite books on spirituality at this time, and it's fall 2024, are the ones by Michael Singer and Dr. David Hawkins. So in Dr. David Hawkins' book called The Map of Consciousness, he talks about a process for anyone who wants to beat procrastination. And so I wanted to share this with you so you can try it out for yourself in any area of your life, but maybe particularly when you want to clear clutter and get organized. So in the book, Dr. Hawkins talks about overcoming the aversion to putting in the effort for positive change. And that's often what I notice with my clients or the people that are following my work. They, they listen, they listen to the information, they are maybe inspired to take action, but then they can't overcome the aversion to actually put in the effort. So how it goes in this episode is first, I will share my notes, or at least the notes from that section of the book from Dr. David Hawkins. And then I offer some ideas on how you can apply this when it comes to clearing clutter and getting organized. So let's dive into my notes first. So here are my notes from the book, The Map of Consciousness by Dr. David Hawkins. He explains that not much effort is actually needed to overcome our aversion to change. Instead, he suggests that by simply paying attention, things can start to shift on their own. He gives the example of wanting to reduce the number of cookies we eat every day because we have been overeating cookies for 20 years. What most people do is they say to themselves, I'm going to quit cookies some days, but that is lying to ourselves. We have been eating 50 plus cookies a day for 20 years. So how are we suddenly going to stop eating cookies? He says, an exertion of willpower does nothing but bring on guilt and feeling of failure. Have you ever been there? I'm sure you have. Trying to quit something cold turkey could just bring on guilt and frustration what I call emotional clutter and mental clutter. So Dr. Hawkins says, the secret is not in our effort, but in our attention. So here's what he suggests. Instead of forcing ourselves to change, we just start counting the cookies. We don't try to stop eating cookies. We're just tracking it. The important point is to not try to do anything about the cookies. It's just about paying attention. All we have to do is make a mental note and write it down on a calendar. Monday, 68 cookies. Tuesday, 18 cookies. Oh, wow. Wednesday, back to the usual 58 cookies. We're tracking without trying to change by just noticing and making a mental note. What will happen is that, by virtue of intention, he says, effortlessly the observer effect kicks in. The simple act of watching influences what we're watching. He says that because of the observer effect, our awareness itself begins to diminish the attraction to cookies. <laughs> it sounds like magic, right? 
By observing and tracking, Hawkins claims that by the end of the month, we will be down to 14 cookies. By the end of another month or two, we will be down to six cookies. And then all of a sudden we will say, what the heck? I don't need any cookies. He says that it's all effortless, that it's not necessary to struggle or cut ourselves down or ma manipulate ourselves with guilt. If we simply notice it effortlessly by our intention, we finesse the power of the field instead of relying on the ego's force. Change, he says, is easy, but we avoid it because it seems like effort to the ego. But it's only effort if we go at it the hard way of forcing ourselves. Instead, we just need to start paying attention and tracking our behavior. Anyone can notice. It requires no exertion, only attention. So those were the notes from that section of the book. So now I want to ask you, have you ever noticed how just by observing something you started to change it? Well, I actually have, I realized when I read this part of the book. So here is two of my own experiences that came to my mind right away. So the first one actually started over 25 years ago. I think it's even over 30 years ago now, because I literally track every single dollar that I spend. It's kind of like a self accountability to myself. It's not that I restrict myself necessarily in spending or I deny myself um, like take out coffee or, or whatever. Um, it's more that I really observe what I spent the money on and just by observing and by watching it without judgment, or at least I try not to judge, <laughs> like it, it actually changes to the positive. So I really run my private finances like a business has to run their finances. Everything gets tracked. And then I actually look at the numbers with a critical eye. For example, a few years back, I noticed I was spending a lot on Starbucks coffee. And I thought, is this really where I want to spend my money? Is it really where I want my money to go to? And again, it's not about blaming or judging. And it's also not about not going to Starbucks. It's just about asking ourselves what we really want to experience or being able to afford and then compare that with how we are actually spending the money. And so I, for myself, I realized I didn't want to continue spending $100 a month or more on coffee from Starbucks, but rather want to go on a trip with that money. So without forcing anything, just noticing how much I was spending made me realize I'd rather save for a trip. And so I stopped going to Starbucks that much. Just by observing, that snapped me out of my autopilot. And now I still go to Starbucks occasionally, but it's very intentional now. Another success with this method that came to my mind when I read this section of the book from Dr. Hawkins was with my weight. I started weighing myself every morning. I think it was during the pandemic when everybody talked about how they all gained weight. And I don't know how I got to the idea. But anyways, I just stepped on the scale every day and and started observing and lo and behold, I lost 15 pounds this way. I didn't focus on dieting or not eating a lot. Well, that might be not 100% uh, um, honest. I, I was aware that a lot of people gained weight during the pandemic because they were, I don't know, probably soothing themselves with food because times were stressful. So that I was aware of, but that was actually never a thing for me. So it, when times get stressful or when I'm not doing good, I actually can't eat. So that might have helped <laughs> in a way too. But I wasn't as stressed out as a lot of people were. And I think I, I attribute a lot of it to that I live here on acreage with my animals. And they gave me a lot of peace of mind and, and structure, structure of my day that a lot of people were lacking. And so, yeah, but anyways, back to the weight loss. So I stepped on a scale every single day and I lost 15 pounds effortlessly, literally without dieting. 
And that's what I actually do to this day, just like with the money. I step on the scale every day and it just keeps me <laughs> in check, so to, call, so to call, but it's effortless. I have gained some pounds back after the surgery because I was not allowed to move and I was not allowed to step on the scale either because I was not allowed to put any weight on my left foot for I think it was three months, which was crazy. So I did gain some weight back, but now I'm back to the habit of stepping on a scale every day and staying my weight quite effortlessly. So here you have it. These are two examples of this observer effect that Dr. Hawkins talks about that we can apply to anything in our life that we, we want to do. And my examples uh, really show how powerful awareness really is. So now let's bring it back to how to apply this to your journey from chaos to peace. If this method can help reduce cookie consumption, <laughs> going to Starbucks and get coffee, um, and can help with managing our weight, imagine what it could do for clearing your clutter, getting organized, or controlling your spending. But you might wonder, so how do I start? What do I do? Do I just pick something? Yes, just pick something simple and start observing. For example, you could try observing, observing how often you pull things out and don't put them back where they belong, which creates physical clutter. Or how often you set things down on a surface when you come home instead of putting them away right away, which also creates physical clutter. Or how often you buy something online without stopping to think if you really need it. Like retail therapy, how we call this, right? This also creates more physical clutter and it often is a waste of money because you don't really need these things that you impulse buy and often even regret later buying them. So maybe you start just observing that. Or you could observe how often you save files during the day to your desktop or download folder instead of really saving them in the proper um, folder that you have created. You do have a filing system, right? So if you if you notice you just dump it in your on your desktop and clutter up your desktop or you just get it into the download folder that had thousands of other files in it already. Notice, notice, and maybe all of a sudden you start putting it in the right spot. Or you could try observing how often you say yes when you actually want to say no, which leads to a cluttered schedule, what I call social clutter. And you become resentful often to your life or to your calendar or even to the people that you said yes to that you should have said no to. So you could observe that. Or you could observe when, how and where you are spending your money, like I do, every money, track it for a month, and then see a category that you actually don't want to spend that much money on, like I did with the Starbucks coffees. And just by being aware of it, by observing your behavior, you will make a change try it out. This is not something that you can just listen to and not do anything like you need to start paying attention. It's no effort. It's effortless. Start paying attention and see what the results are. So I just gave you some examples. I gave you some ideas here, but you can come up with your own little experiment, what you want to observe and see how it changes. Dr. Hawkins says, anything you do not like about yourself, getting annoyed with people, swearing, or what have you, can be transcended by noting down how many times a day you do it. That was his quote from the book. So pick an area and start tracking. Remember, you're not trying to change anything. You just notice. And important, 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 you don't judge yourself. You don't beat yourself up. Just Notice, the observer effect will naturally start to create a shift. 
And as Dr. Hawkins says, change and letting go of the familiar is easy, but we avoid it because it seems like effort to the ego. But it only seems like effort if we go at it at the hard way of forcing ourselves by using willpower. But what if it were easy? What if simply observing us and our behavior would effortlessly create the change we want? I really encourage you to try it out. You'll be surprised at the changes that happen without effort. And as you heard from my two examples, it definitely works. And it's a good starting point to overcome procrastination by not trying to take action, but instead just to observe our behavior. I would love to hear what you think about this. Does this resonate? Are you going to try this? You can actually send me a text message. Buzzsprout, my podcast host, offers us this tool that our audience can send us a text message. Don't worry, it will not show me your phone number or particular private information. It just shows me the message and it says from what part of the world it's coming from. And I would really love to receive a text message. So if you hear this, please go to the show notes and click on on the link that says send me a text message and let me know whether whether or not you like this episode and whether you're going to try this out try to observe yourself. Of course, if you don't want to send a text message, you can also send me a DM on Facebook or Instagram. I love hearing from you either way. Okay, my friend, that's it for today. Thank you for joining me and for listening all the way to the end. I am Connie Graf, your host. And until next time, take good care, stay organized and stay at peace. Bye for now. Hey, I'm Connie, your host, and I wanted to thank you for listening to the podcast today. Did you know you can bring your chaos to me? If you struggle with chaos in your office, on your desk, in your files and finances, use the link in the show notes and sign up for a complimentary 30 minutes chaos to peace jumpstart call, where we will address your most pressing pain point around clutter and chaos and how to solve it in a few minutes a day. And if you're ready, we can also discuss options for moving forward together and how I can help you on your journey from chaos to peace.